Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College, bringing you the next of what to look for in the night sky. Uh, this time we're talking about uh, the week of November 11th, 2024. So we're getting deep into November here, deep into fall. And it's a moon week. There's a lot of, lot of moonlight this week, about as tough as it gets. Uh, so let's start there on the night of the 11th. So on the evening of the 11th into the 12th. So uh, with the moon as full as it is, uh, the full moon rises right at dark and stays in the sky until daylight, until morning. And the, the waxing moon rises before that and sets earlier, and the waning moon rises after that and sets later. Uh, so if it's, if, depending on where you are relative to that, you can plan your observing. Uh, this week we're so close to full. We start the week waxing toward full and we end the week waning away from full a little bit, but we're, we're pretty full the whole time. On the 11th, we start 80% full, headed toward full. Uh, the moon is about 10 to 15 degrees. Remember, uh, 10 degrees is a, a fist width at arm's length. It's about 10 to 15 degrees away from Saturn. So you find the moon, uh, you move right, you move toward the west from the moon, and you'll see Saturn glowing there pretty well. Drop down about twice that far, one and a half times that far uh, to the south and a little bit to the east and you come to Dipta in the constellation Cetus. Uh, it's a second magnitude star. Both of these objects are bright enough to hold up to a nearly full moon, so you should be able to see them pretty clearly. Uh, so this is, these are good objects. If you've not uh, observed Cetus, uh, the constellation of Cetus, the sea monster at all before, uh, Dipta is a great place to start, and you've got a nice guide to it right there. So that's what we look at on the evening of the 11th into the morning of the 12th. Again, we're so close to full, you can do this observing after dark, you can, as soon as the sun sets, right on up uh, until almost sunrise. Uh, by three days later, the 14th into the 15th, uh, the moon is, is, is basically full. It's still, wa it's still waxing toward full a little bit, but it's more than 95% full. So you can, uh, it's, a, it's a very full moon, and it sits about 8 degrees from the star Hamal. So again, a little bit less than a fist width at arm's length. Hamal is a second magnitude star. We can see stars down to about fifth magnitude, uh, and so second magnitude star is pretty bright. It should hold up to the full moon. If you need your binoculars, go ahead and use your binoculars to get out there and see it, but I think you can see Hamal there. Uh, the brightest star in Aries. So this is the Alpha star, Alpha Arietis, and then we got, so you got eight degrees over from the moon to Hamal, and you can drop down four degrees, half that distance down from Hamal, and you get to share a 10. Uh, a 2.6 magnitude star. I still think you can see that star, even with the moon uh, very close nearby and basically full. And it's so, so that's the beta star in Aries. So we've got much of the constellation of Aries right here because right below Sheraton, one and a half degrees, uh, a little over a, a finger width at arm's length below Sheraton is Mesartim. And Mesartim is a 3.8 magnitude star. That might start to get to be tough with the moon so close. So identify these stars. Find Hamal, find Sheraton. Use your binoculars if you need them to find Mesartim or wait a night. Uh, one night later, the moon will have moved far enough off this direction. Uh, two nights later, for sure, uh, that you can probably pick out Mesartim if you've got a, darker, a dark sky without the moon uh, with, with naked eyes. But use optical uh, aid as you need to. But Mesartim is a binary star that has about two, the two components are, are easily separable, seven and a half arc seconds. So any telescope should pretty much separate these two stars. So you got your small telescope, uh, a, a very pretty uh, binary star. Go out the gamma star, alpha, be, alpha star, beta star, gamma star, mesartim in Aries. So gamma Arietis, uh, seven and a half arc seconds is the separation of those two stars. Uh, check that out. Uh, when, when the moonlight allows, but I think if you've got your telescope, you should be able to have no problem finding these binary stars. Interesting to note, you know, you've got Gamma Leonis and you've got uh, Gamma Andromeda, uh, and so you've, got, so you've got these Gamma stars, for whatever reason, that are, are not too far away from here, that are all really, really nice binary stars. Uh, and this is another one in Aries. Uh, and again, if you, haven't, if you haven't found Aries before, you haven't seen Cetus, you haven't seen Aries, great opportunity to use the moon to guide you to do that. A couple nights later, evening of the 16th into the 17th, still basically a full moon. I think by that point, we have wrapped over and started to wane away, uh, but we're still more than 95% full. The moon sits 8 degrees, that's how far it was from Hamal over here. Now the moon sits 8 degrees 
but eight degrees west of Jupiter. And so Jupiter will be the big bright dot of light. And then you can drop down about 10 degrees back over toward the moon and south to get to Aldebaran, the eye of the bull. That translates as from Arabic. Uh, so we got big bright Aldebaran, a nice grouping of objects in the sky there on the 16th and the 17th. So that's what we can use to have the moon, help the moon guide us to objects uh, across the, the week here. Um, you know, sometimes I complain. Last week I complained about, uh, having two weeks ago sometime, about not having uh, the moon to wash anything out so we could pick whatever we wanted to observe. And now we, the moon constricts us a lot and we have to co sort of take what the moon gives us right here. Uh, but it should be a great week of observing. Sort of my approach to it is uh, any week, <laughs> any week we have the possibility of getting out and seeing the night sky is a great week. So let's try to take advantage of it and go out and see some of these things. Now, last week we talked about Mars tracking toward the beehive cluster in prograde motion in the middle of Cancer. And so Mars continues to do that. It's going to, it's, you know, we got, it's fun to keep tracking it. Oh, we got Castor and Pollux, the bright twin stars up here. They're separated by about four and a half degrees. Twice that separation down and off to the left, off to the east, you're going to come across uh, Mars down here. Mars is big and bright. It's a bright, bright, bright object. Uh, this is about 10 degrees over that direction. So if you've been watching this, great. If not, pick it up this week and start watching it. Mars is moving toward M44, the beehive cluster in the heart of Cancer. Cancer is a group of fairly faint stars. I did a planetarium show this week, and I tried to describe what Cancer looks like to me, these stars. And I always just come up with a jack, and nobody even knows what that is anymore, the toy, right? Not, the, not what you would lift your car with. Um, so I, I, I don't really know what, uh, you know what that is. Uh, um, what is that? That's a, maybe it's a CH4, I, I don't know, um, molecule. But we've got something like this here. Uh, the, but this week, as Mars closes in on the beehive cluster there, keep watching that. We said, you know, we head toward the end of December. It'll get really close there before it starts retrograde motion and moving back away. So it's a great project for the fall to watch that. But this week, four degrees below Mars, roughly speaking, about the same separation as Castor and Pollux. Find the bright twin stars up here, Castor and Pollux, drop down to Mars, and about that same distance between Castor and Pollux, drop straight to the south, and you've got Zeta Cancri, the Zeta star in Cancer. It's a 4.7 magnitude star, so not a very bright star. Dark sky, you can see it. Uh, you don't have a dark sky. You've got some light pollution. You've got the moon coming in. You're going to have a really hard time seeing this star. The moon's going to be far enough away early in the week uh, that you shouldn't have much trouble with this. Uh, so this whole region, you know, by midnight, this whole region uh, should be up in the sky pretty easily, pretty easily to see these things. Um, and the Zeta star, uh, so, so do this early in the week, uh, and you've got this 4.7 magnitude star. But Zeta is great because Zeta is an A and B star. It's a binary star that has about one arc seconds of separation. Test your telescope and see if you can see that as two stars. You're probably not going to see space between the two stars. In fact, I'm pretty sure you won't. Uh, but you can see the two stars as lobes, maybe. Maybe not. But there's a third star there. The C star is about 5.8 arc seconds. Remember, uh, seven and a half we said was easy and good. This is easy and good. Uh, so you got a, a third star, a, a third star in the system right there, and you can separate that star at 5.8 arc seconds away. It orbits uh, the other two stars with a period of about 1,100 years. So it's a, it's, it's out there away. It's got this 1,100 year orbit, and this is something that you can you can see that X, that star. But the C star itself can be split into C A and C B with about three tenths of an arc second separation. That I'm sure you can't do, uh, and so you you can't tell that. Uh, but you, you need, you know, you need mountaintop observatory, uh, space observatory, good equipment, and then it's not much of a problem. But here it's a, it's, a, it's a problem for most of us who live down here in the writhing, roiling atmosphere, right? All atmospheres seem to be writhing and roiling right now. So that's what we got. Uh, the, 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 these stars are separated by about three-tenths of an arc second, 17-year uh, orbital period. 17 year old period. Uh, this would have been what we knew as an astrometric binary once upon a time when we couldn't tell uh, that there was a second star right there. We could see that it was wobbling around. This one star was wobbling around so we could see it, uh, that it was moving. So it was orbiting around something. And, that, and now we can tell that that's a, a, another star in there. 
And then the B star itself is two stars, CB1 and CB2. Uh, that, so there's a lot of stars in the Zeta Cancri system. Uh, see what you can observe there. Uh, again, a chance just to observe the stars of cancer if you haven't spent any time observing the stars of cancer, but also a chance to get your telescope out and see what you can do about pulling apart some, some binary stars. So that's what we got for you this week. The moon, a lot of moon, uh, some interesting pairings of the moon with other objects, a chance to observe Cetus, Aries, and Aldebaran and Jupiter. And then we've got Mars is kind of guide us to Cancer, and we can, we can do some good uh, binary star observing this week. So it should be a lot of fun. Hope you get a chance to get out and observe. And as always, thanks for watching, everybody.